Hello again, everybody. I do apologize. It has been almost a week now since I did another uh, round of Black Box Log video responses. I, I've been pretty busy uh, <laughs> trying to get this uh, race, uh, sorry, QAVR uh, that was sent to me built so I could do the testing that has been requested. Uh, sadly, it did not come without any strings. Uh, and I've uh, been, been busy working on a couple other things. Also, as you can tell probably from my voice, I have a cold. But uh, never fear. I, I, I haven't forgotten the little people who got me where I am today. Uh, I'm still Jenny from the block. And let's get some black box log video responses done. This is a submission from Bird of Prey who says, here's a black box log of my Raptor 6 from yesterday. I'm very happy with the way it flies, but I thought I'd get a second opinion from you. And I would like to say that if you're very happy with the way it flies, then don't listen to me. Don't listen. Just go out and fly it and have a great time. But ah, uh, what what the heck? I'll look at your pits and I'll look at your black box logs anyway. I would like to point out, I looked at your video and... Uh, your video is great. I enjoyed your video. In fact, ah, you fly line of sight. You're one of those crazy people who flies crazy acro line of sight. Yikes. <laughs> Good for you. One of the few. Uh, I can't do a lot with it uh, in terms of the black box, though. Uh, so it really I, it needs to be FPV video for me to really be able to sort of analyze it. Because the onboard camera shows things like wobbles and bobbles and oscillations and overshoots in a way that 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 LS line of sight doesn't. So I enjoyed your video. It was awesome. Everyone should have watched it. If you didn't, go watch it. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, I can't do that. I can't fly line of sight. I can fly line of sight fixed wings uh, out to the point where they're a little dot and get them back home again. Something about the fact that they're always going forward works for me. But something about multi-rotors, I can just barely do the most simple maneuvers. But enough about me. Let's look at your log. As usual, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at your gyros to get a sense of your overall noise level. Uh, especially since beta flight has come in, the gyros have been super clean, super clean, to the point where I almost think, is it even worth looking at them? But hey, the one time you don't look at them, it's going to have some kind of crazy weird noise issue and be super, super noisy. And the fact that they're usually so clean means that if we did see any noise, it would definitely be indicative of a problem. But we don't really see any noise here. There's a little noisy on yaw here. Maybe something's going on on yaw in the tuning that we should look at. Overall, though, these lines are super thin. And that is the result of the awesome, awesome filtering in the latest revs from 2.3 something and on. Uh, the awesome filtering that Boris has come up with. The gyro lines just always look incredible. Okay, so uh, we, we looked at that. Now let's move on. We'll take a look at roll. And we'll zoom in. And what do we see? I see that the D term, I'm looking at the proportionality of the D term to the P term. The D term is not much larger than the P term. It's a little more active. That's okay. Yep, 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 yep. You're really working. Let's just show everybody if I scroll down here. You are really working the throttle. Like, you're going full throttle a lot. So, uh, yikes. You are working the throttle. So, we've got some periods in here where you're doing things like this. Where you're just doing a whole bunch of crazy moves, right? Full throttle all over the place. And I can't even judge this. So... I just want to point out to people, if when you're doing kind of crazy stuff like this, it's hard to judge whether this is good or bad because what's happening here is so extreme. Like, I don't see anything that looks like crazy P-term oscillations. Here's a little bit of oscillation, right? Notice that it decreases in magnitude, but it has sort of regular uh, sine wave-shaped oscillations. Both the P and the D-term are doing that. Mostly, though, it's just kind of all over the place. And so I can't really say much about that because it's if it's flying good, I guess I'm happy. But it's just so all over the place, it's hard to judge whether it's good or bad. Most of the time, though, it, it this looks okay. It doesn't look bad to me. Uh, it, if anything, I, could, I would think maybe your roll P term could come up. Uh, it's hard to judge. Betaflight has gotten so good at managing the P term. Uh, PID gains or P gains that would have been excessive before. It just seems to keep them in check better. 
this whole system seems to be more responsive and there's less overshoot. So you seem to be able to go to higher P gains without problem. Here you are at full throttle and you can see the P term is really relatively sedate. The D term is getting a little active. I wouldn't increase D, I don't think. But if anything, it seems like P could maybe come up. It, again, it's kind of hard to judge without a bigger picture. And because some of these moves are so extreme, it's a little hard to tell. Like, is there overshoot at your flips and rolls? Well, you're flying line of sight, so we don't know, and we don't we don't care. Because we're not going to see it if there's a little bit of overshoot, like we would if there was a high-def camera on board. I'd love to find some examples of prop wash oscillation. So we could tell whether you were, you know, that would be a sign that maybe your P and D were on the edge. Overall, though, the P term, I don't see any signs of high-frequency noise. I don't see any... Uh, so here's some activity in the D term. That's D is starting to get oscillated here. See the regularity in, in the D term in this little section here. So the D term is, I think your D term is right about where it needs to be. It feels like it is, if it were much higher, it would be too high. But it's kind of right where it needs to be. The D term is always a little on the, I think it's best when it's just on the edge of too much. Which, if you don't have black box, then just be conservative, because if you go over the edge, you'll get into a bad situation with micro oscillations and overheating your motors and ESCs, and things will get, you just get bad. Sometimes you can hear that in a kind of a high frequency. Uh, I, if you haven't heard it, it's hard to explain, and I unfortunately, I know you guys love it when I mimic the sounds, but I can't really do it. I can't think exactly what to do. But uh, I would say if you don't have black box, be conservative on your D term, but if you have black box, you can get really nice sharp response by tuning D right to the edge of where it would almost be too much. And it feels like that's about where you are. Here you are at high throttle, and you're starting to see some oscillations in the D term. <coughs> but you don't see like crazy oscillations all the time. And there are plenty of times when the D term, here, here we've got some oscillations again, you're at high throttle. There are plenty of times where the D term is relatively sedate when you're not being insane like you are now. <laughs> like like here, right? The D term is just kind of moving along, doing its thing, not oscillating. Whereas if D was too high, it would kind of just always be oscillating all the time, and that's never good. Um, if you had more times where you weren't at max throttle, it would be easier to assess this. <laughs> anyway, I feel like you're, that's, that's a good assessment of your roll axis. You could probably bump roll P up a little more if you felt like it. But again, if you like how it flies, don't change it. There's nothing wrong here. It's just a matter of preference. And again, different pilots have different preferences. Some people like a little sharper response. Some people like a little softer response. There's nothing wrong with any of that. Um, looking at pitch. <coughs> so the D term on pitch, can you guys see that it is more active? It has a lot more magnitude up and down. Okay. So that is more, that is the kind of thing you see when you're starting to get these, these narrow, large spikes. That is when the D term is starting to get too active and you may be getting micro oscillations into the motors. I don't know if it's quite to a level where I would say, whoa, that's too much, back it down. I think you're, it feels, see, here you are at moderate throttle and the D term has kind of calmed down, right? And now it's just kind of doing its thing, following along the P term, nothing, nothing too bad. So the fat, here you are at pretty high throttle. And again, you're not doing any crazy maneuvers though. And the D term is not flipping out. So I don't think you're at, get at a point now he, oh, now it's getting active, right? If it looked like this or even worse all the time, I would say, oh, back it down. But, but I think you're still in the level where I would say if you like how it flies and your motors are coming down cool, leave it alone. <coughs> now here we've got some surging in the P term. Right here, these three humps here. It's starting to get some surging. You've just dropped the throttle. It's as you're dropping the throttle. So I'm guessing, I don't know, it probably seems like it's excessive to call that prop wash. But hey, now you punch the throttle again. We don't see any like super oscillations in the P term on pitch either. So if you wanted to raise it on pitch, I wouldn't I wouldn't tell you not to. Raise P on pitch. I think you should leave D about where they are. Maybe D on pitch could come down a tiny bit. But again, I'm just gonna reiterate this because everybody likes to listen to what I say and oh very interesting. 
I'm looking at these traces and you're flying it. If you like how it flies, then just keep flying it, okay? Um, but give I would say give a try. Bump P up just a little bit. Like, uh, are you on rewrite or are you on Lux Float? You're probably on rewrite. People seem to be on rewrite these days. So let's see what you're on. Rewrite. If you're on rewrite, your pitch is 3.1. Take it up to 3.3. And your roll is 3.1. Oh, I hope you're flying an X copter. Let's look. Raptor 6. Are you flying an X copter? What is that? That's not a. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's an X copter. Okay, you're off the hook then. Yeah, if you have a, an X copter like that, then having identical pitch and roll P, P gains is, is normal and expected. And in fact, this makes your tuning super simple because you're going to tune the same on each axis. Um, but then why does your pitch look so different? Your pitch does not look identical to your roll, even though your gains are the same. I, I assume that was because you had a weight distribution thing, but your weight distribution should be pretty consistent. So I don't have a good answer for you there. They didn't look identical, though. So maybe there's something going on with your weight distribution where your roll is not quite the same as your pitch. I don't know. Maybe you know, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I would say try taking your P gain on pitch and roll from 3.1 up to maybe 3.3 or even 3.4 and see if you like that better. If you notice any additional oscillations, then eh, take it back down. But maybe that'll sharpen it up a little bit and you'll like it better. It feels like you have a little bit of room to go there if you wanted to. Now, as for yaw, your D gain on yaw is low and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's usually additional noise on the yaw axis, so raising D on yaw has the worst effect of any of the three axes. Um, your D gain on yaw is basically non-existent. You could raise it a little if you wanted to and change your yaw handling a little. Your D gain on yaw is 10. You could take it to maybe 15. It would start to get a little more active, but you definitely want to keep yaw D on the low side. Now here as you go to high throttle, this I don't like. Okay, so it's normal to see the yaw axis P term being super noisy, super active, because there's more noise on the yaw, the yaw axis, and it has to try to respond to it. So spikes like this, and spikes like this, if this were on the pitcher roll axis, I would I would complain. But on the yaw axis, I kind of, I'm like, mean, yeah, what are you going to do? But then we get over here, and this I don't like. Now... Okay, so you're at max throttle, then you drop it, and it comes right back into line. Maybe this would be a time where, if this were another day and age, we would say use some TPA. Uh, but these days, we don't seem to be using TPA as much. We seem to be able to get a tune that just is the way it is, regardless of throttle position. This feels to me like I wouldn't like it. Like, I'm probably getting some oscillations at high throttle, especially if I was flying FPV. Now, with you flying line of sight, you may not notice them, and it may not matter. Do we see a lot of that, or is that just an isolated incident? That's the next question. Again, see here we're at high throttle. This is probably more activity on the P term than I would like to see. And it feels like I would probably bump P gain on, on yaw down a little bit. So you are at 4.0. Gosh, that's, oh, that's the float. Sorry, whoop, my bad. Uh, yaw is 8.5. See if you maybe take it down to 8. And see if you like that okay. Oh, and I apologize. Your D on yaw is 5. That makes more sense. I was a little surprised when I saw 10. Uh, at D on yaw, try taking it up to 10 and see if you like that. You may not even notice a difference, but you can see right now your yaw D is just not doing anything. And you don't want you, you don't want it to get out of hand on yaw especially. But, I mean, let, let it be. Let it do a little bit of work. Don't just leave it sitting in the corner smoking a cigarette all day, right? Yeah, see this? this I don't like this at all. I wouldn't like this. Uh, just on principle, I wouldn't like that. That seems way too active. You see how the, for people who don't know what I'm talking about, you see how the P term here, the red line, is just going up and down, up and down, up and down, just all over the place with the high frequency activity. That's not good. That's going to result in micro oscillations to your motors. That's the word of the day is micro oscillations. It, it, it's going to, if you're shooting high def, it's going to create an unpleasant sound and potentially vibration. And just, I, it's not going to give you the best performance, I don't think. Alrighty, there you go. I uh, hope that's helpful, and happy flying.